Will you hear me with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God in heaven, favor with all the people. The Lord added to the church a daily, such as should be saved. You go to Acts 5. Verse 42. Pretty much says the same thing. Daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus. Now let me share something with you, everyone. Listen, because I'm going to go, got to go to the old covenant. Um, matter of fact, you can go there and Load it up now to Exodus chapter number 9. While I'm elaborating. And hear clear. Understand. It's very simple. It's nothing Greek about what I'm saying. This is going to convict some of us. Technically convict the majority of us. Not just here. Right now. The day we're living in, and everybody will aim at our arrows in the wrong direction, first of all, because we believe, not me, that there are principalities in the air. Amen. Amen. Glory. Amen. And that's false teaching. That's right. When Jesus came on the earth, I don't find anywhere in the Gospels where he cast the devil down out the sky. Amen. Amen. When Satan was gone from earth to hell and heaven, it was under the law. In the new grace dispensation, the law was abolished. So now Jesus comes on the scene now, you probably, you know, know more than me. Everywhere I've seen him deal with the devil was in a person. Amen. It wasn't in the sky. That's right. Amen. So what we're doing is binding airs. The airplanes have liberty and grace by the wisdom God gave to man to fly up there and don't fall out. So you're actually... Coming or launching warfare against pilots that are on airplanes Amen. and calling it a devil. What does that have to do? Because I believe, and I believe that the information that I'm giving out is apostolic and prophetic. Amen. I believe that this coronavirus is no different than anthrax. Amen. Amen. I believe somebody invented anthrax. I believe somebody invented the coronavirus. I believe somebody invented AIDS. I believe somebody invented syphilis. I believe somebody invented herpes. I believe somebody's invented all these diseases. And I believe, number one, it is an attack and an insult to God the Father, number one. And I believe that it is an attack and an assignment and a strategy to shut the, the church down. They got all these faith folk. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Amen. Wash your hand. Take a bath. Don't put your hand on your mouth. Obey the laws. Amen. But if you got faith, don't come against the clouds in the sky. God put them there. Amen. Come against the person that's in the man that's given him a brilliant mind that came from God because all wisdom comes from God. But it's how you use the wisdom that determines the outcome. So we need to be praying against the forces that are embedded or embodied in flesh bodies. That's good. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's not talking about human beings. It's talking about what is housed or what is in flesh and blood. And I believe the enemy who is Satan with the small s, the devil with a small I believe that his assignment is to shut down the church doors. Amen. That's good. While I said, I just showed it to you in Acts 5, 46. Amen. 
<laughs> Acts 5, 42 and Acts 2 and 46. I just showed you where they went to the temple. Now, we struggle to get people to come to church on Sunday and Wednesday. Amen. They went to church seven days a week. If you read the same Bible scripture I read. Amen. Amen. Now, here it is. We have this disease, this big boy on the block. All right. That says, shut them down all together. Because ain't nobody got no faith. And see, it's a message like this that God gave a holy apostle and prophet. Amen. I can't speak for nobody else. Because if he's going to do something, he's going to take a secret. He's going to embed it in my heart. And from my heart, I'm going to speak from my spirit, from these lips of clay, the very revelation and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let the people know where we are and what's really going on. So here's where we are. They went to church seven days. Amen. It's nothing new under the sun. All right. Amen. Don't panic. That's right. God's got it all under control. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Wash your hand. Wash your clothes. Take around little sanitation towels and things. Do all of that. Do what they're telling you to do. Amen. But by the power, look, listen to me. I ain't going to say no if I be no apostle. Amen. I am. That's like saying, if I'm a man, I'm a man. I ain't got to check myself. Well, if I be a prophet of God, this is going to happen. No, I am one. I'm saying that because I'm like Gabriel, and it qualifies me to say this right here. By the word of God, I am right now speaking that churches and people should gather together. This ain't got nothing to do with nobody got shot. Be it black, white, Hispanic, polka dot, or Jew. This is about something that the enemy is launching against the kingdom of God. Kingdom is rising against kingdom. Nation is rising against nation. Now we need church folk who got backbone to rise up and stand flat foot in the face of the devil and declare that we're not going down the weapons of our warfare now call, but they're mighty through God to the putting down of strongholds. Fight this devil. And he ain't a spooky spirit. He's a white man or a black man or a Hispanic man with a demon force in his mortal body. Launching this attack against the church to shut down the church of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because ain't nobody praying. Amen. Amen. Jesus do in his days on the boat. There was a storm. He knew the storm was coming. That's why he told 12 grown men who was experienced skilled fishers to get on a boat that they were accustomed to getting on, and it was that one storm that came that they panicked because they didn't see nothing like that before, but they had battled storms on a regular because that was their occupation the world of living and provide for their household. Amen. Amen. So Jesus back there on the boat sleep. What did he do? They go back there. Let me give it in its most purest practical form. It's like I pray. It's like I pray. When I talk to God, I go to God, and I talk to God like a son. I don't talk to him like an alien. Amen. I said, Lord, do you even care about what I'm going through? That's what they were saying. Mm -hmm. So you're reading it in the King James Version, which is a good version. They're saying, Lord, care not, not that we perish. That sound real cool, sound real calm, sound real collective. But unless you have been somewhere in something, faced with something that only God can set you free from, and I'm not talking about no seeing or trouble, Amen. then you'll understand the totality of how they really prayed and how they prayed was they went back there and shook him and woke him up and said, look, do you even care about we in this storm and we about to perish? In other words, we're going to die. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. Amen. Jesus got up. He didn't look up to the cloud and say, okay, second heaven. All y'all demons down there that's over this region, get out. No, the Bible said he looked to the wind. And he re it, it, it said he rebuked the wind. Amen. You got to understand, that's exorcism. Mm -hmm. Anytime the word rebuke is used, it's dealing with exorcism. 
for all of you Christians and church folk that don't know what exorcism is, that means it's principalities, demon forces that are present. Amen. Amen. The same demon that was in the wind that came against the boat, who was Peter, is the same demon who's called Satan in Job 1, Satan in Job 2. And so he went to heaven under the law. And God said, where you been, boy? He started going through the earth, walking up and down in it, yeah. trying to find me somebody to devour. Right. Trying to find me somebody to spook. Trying to find me somebody to sell fear to. He said, look, okay, I don't know if you're going to be able to find nobody like that, but I tell you what, I got a dude down there that's standing between the gap called Apostle Stan Rice in this little city, a little church, ain't got no more than 20 people. It's yeah. like it's 20,000. You can go down there and touch him. You can't kill him, and you can't take his life. Yeah. And the Bible says that that came in when Come on now. after the conversation. Amen. And it smoked Job's house. And it killed everybody who was not up under that apostolic covering or in a church with Episcopal had a pastor that was praying for their life. His sons and daughters was over there out of the covering of their father eating and drinking, getting drunk. Because they was not in the secret place of God. In the secret place of God is up under the blood of Jesus Christ. On, when you come up under the blood of Jesus, uh, no wind, no storm, no perilous of time, no devil, no demon, no person, no disease, no sickness can come into your house and touch you. That's why it's called the Lord's Passover. Passover. He's passing over. Jesus. And wherever he see his blood. Come on now. If it's in the car you drive, can't nobody hit it. Amen. 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 Church, they went seven days a week. Them doors ain't never shut. Jesus was woke, awakened. The Bible said he rebuked the wind. He said, stop it. Not stop it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> He was talking to the devil Amen. because the devil had caused a disturbance in the wind that was designed to strike fear in 12 grown men. Now you got Christians running around all hysteria and acting crazy. Because they scared of Corona and somebody invented it. But ain't nobody bold enough to speak to the nation and the other nations of the world and let them know that this too shall pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, stop that. Get out of that wind. Same wind is the same wind. It's the person that was in the wind in Job's book. Sent that wind and it destroyed the homes that Job's children was in. Who caused that wind to do that? The devil. Said his sons and his daughters was over his son's eldest son's house. They left the covering. You know what? Don't go to church today. Because don't take that. You ain't got to go to church to go to heaven. Liar, liar. I said, liar, liar. I know some of y'all don't even want to be up in here. You got to be spooked in. Somebody got to tell you you're going to die for you to come. So I had to tell you going to get a new car to get you here. Somebody tell you going to get a new house to get here. Well, everybody needs to be in church right now, knocking down church doors, trying to get up in here so that we can enforce this power that's called the power of prayer, knowing that when the righteous cry, the Lord hear you. So you even open your, your mouth when you hit your thought process. God, I'm say, I got that. Amen. That's good. Men are always praying, never faint. This is where we are. I'm sure of this. Amen. I'm sure somebody invented it. Amen. I'm sure. And I'm sure that it is good for economics. Remember what field I'm in. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. I looked at my guy's records. The other day I picked up my sheet. Yesterday more I picked up my sheet. $63,000 worth of product. Ain't none on the shelf. Amen. It's gone. 
I was talking to my boys. I got nine of them. I said, how much you get this week, man? He's $21,000. In one week. Mm -hmm. Amen. One week. Amen. Ask my other boy, because they're competing now. Amen. And I'm pitching to them. In a very, just a very practical way. They don't know I'm no preacher. I'm pitching to them. As you know, even though it's a bad time, it's a good time. Y'all about to go and get this product and go and put it on out there because it's going to disappear. Amen. 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 Them Jones ordered like 140 and 150 and 130 and 128 trays, which comes out to be like about five to 10,000 loads. And it's gone. They put it in the store and they say in three hours it's gone. Because you got to scare people to get them to spend money. Amen. And the government know, our senators know, the city council know, all of them know, the president know, the vice president know, that it's good for economics. Keep people on the field factor. Amen. However, I've got to take away the little quote. This is not false evidence appearing real. It's real evidence that is real and playing as the nose on your face, but it ain't nothing too great that my God can't handle. Yeah. The yeah. kingdom of heaven shall survive yeah. with the yeah. violent. Yeah. Got to rise up, take your rightful from place, and get it back by force. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Preach this five years ago. Five years ago, I heard God said, go get that out. Go tell the people again. It has arrived. Amen. They talked about Jesus thousands of years, not 2,000, way more than that. So he even showed up. Every word of God is true. Amen. That's why you got to watch what you say. Amen. You might not get it today, but you're going to get it. We talk about the power of the spoken word. Keep speaking positive things over your body, over your life, over your house, over your finance, over your health, yeah. over your strength, over your children, over your grandchildren. Yeah. Keep saying it. Don't speak it by feeling. Speak it by faith. Yes. Yes. Amen. Get out of the way Amen. and allow God to be the doer of the word that you are declaring on his behalf. They went to church every day. It's an attack on the church. Amen. Shut them down. It really ain't but one, two things you can do. And I know you have ministries have online, people pledge online and, and, and apps and all of that. Okay, cool. What about those who don't? And I'm going to be real today because I ain't playing around. I always have my marching orders. I don't have to get them when I get up in here. It's some of the most faithful small churches that are staying true. Because a lot of times when churches and people grow and they finally get their house and finally get their car and finally get their mansion, they change. Amen. You don't see no more truth. We're just motivating people. But I believe if you preach truth, bringing it from the word of God, it should be motivating from within itself because it's coming from that book. Yes. Jesus said it this way. He said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Right. They are motivating yes. and they are life producing. Yes. Yes. Now we're living in a famous hour. Amen. Amen. You better get ready. Lay down on that road for the last time because this house is getting ready to jam. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say it again. I didn't bite my tongue when I said that. I said, better stretch your arm out for the last time. Praise team don't be threatened. Dance team don't be threatened. People of the world don't be threatened because help is coming. Yes, sir, we got more in. Yeah. It's coming. As a matter of fact, for some of y'all, entrepreneurs sitting up here yeah. in here and yeah. impregnated with business locked up on the inside of you. Your business partner yeah. is on his and her way right yeah. now. Yeah. You're not going to retire from your yeah. job. Yeah. God's going to give you that one genius idea that when you birth that thing out, it's going to set you up yeah. and prepare you to live the grace life yeah. until the day of the appearance of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, yes. it is on yes. its way. Here we go, yes. Pastor. It's harvest time. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cry your cry. Shout your shout. Clap yes. your clap. Yes. 
Run your run. Yeah. It's hard this time. Yeah. I said it's hard this yeah. time. Yeah. It's hard this time. Yeah. It's hard this time. Yeah. Hard this time. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus text. Be seated. Go to Exodus very quickly. Amen. Chapter number nine. I'm going to try to get there. It's invented. Inventing. They're inventing. We can put a man on the moon, but we can't stop Corona. We can take a cell phone, put a TV on it, and you can watch shows on your phone right now, but we can't stop Corona. Come on, give me a break. Amen. 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 Something's not right with that picture. Amen. I know they say everything is built in China and everything is built in Japan, but the mastermind is in America. The genius mind is in America. Amen. The best mind is in America. Amen. This is a superpowered nation here, right here, this place where we were born and raised. It's right here in America. Amen. Go to Exodus. I got to try my best to get some scripture out. Amen. Exodus chapter 9, quickly. I'm going to read two verses. Pitch, come back. I'm trying to get here. Get, get. Get verses behind this. I can't get it all out. Matter of fact, I'm uh, starting in verse 1. I'm going to read very quickly. Chapter 9 of Exodus says, Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh. Who is Pharaoh? The government. He ain't sent him to no clouds. He ain't tell him to get no airplane. He ain't tell him to get no helium balloon. No, he told him to go to a person. Why? That's where the enemy was in that body. The devil needs a body to do what he needs to do in it. I can't get nobody to help me. I said, he needs a body. Yes. I got this flesh and blood. That don't mean I'm not wrestling against you. It means that my spirit is warring against what spirit is in that person. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Amen. Kingdom shall rise against kingdom. Nations, ethnics, nations, United States, and nations, people, cultures, African Americans, and Caucasians uh, shall rise. Uh, parents shall rise against the daughter. The daughter shall rise against their parents. These are all the statements that are based. Two kingdoms being divided. He's going to Pharaoh. God, I don't know how this is going to happen. I need a major platform. Amen. Amen. Clap for that. Amen. This is too big for small. That's why some of y'all got to get your thinking up. You got to get your thinking up for yourself. Amen. Quit thinking about a car and get a car lot. Quit thinking about keeping somebody's children to get a daycare. Talk to me, somebody. Quit thinking about praying somebody hell they make a shop. You got to think bigger. You got to ask God to come down and let your mind become his mind. Let this mind which was in Christ be also in you. Yes. Jesus thinks better than a light bill and a wall bill and a phone bill. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So go to Pharaoh. He's a tax master. That's the real problem. That's the one that Satan is using. Amen. Go to him. Go to Moses. My family Moses. Go to Pharaoh. Tell him this. Thus said the Lord God of the, of the Hebrews. Let my people go that they may serve me. Now let me share some of you. Serving God at home is your personal life of worship. Amen. You're not going to find anywhere in the Bible where we are exempt from congregating together. Amen. <clears throat> That's what heaven is about. Everybody being in one place where God is there. He's the ruler because we're not worry about all this mess up there. Amen. 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 Don't be no kissy kissy in heaven. You can't kiss Jesus behind and get a promotion. Amen. That's right. Amen. Verse 2, I've got to read fast. For thou refuse. Look at this now. Watch this. If thou refuse to let them go and would hold them still, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon your cattle. What do you do with cattle? How about eat them? The cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses. What do you do in those days? That's like your car. It affects the economy. 
Upon the asses, they plow. Upon the camels, they carry loads. These are commodities in their day. Upon the oxen, oxen plow. Upon the sheep, gills milk, and you eat sheep. There shall be a very grievous moraine. Look at that. I'm going to read it again. It's going to be a very grievous moraine. God is saying, look, this is what's going to happen. And see, I, I can't just speak to Pharaoh. I got to speak to wandering Christians. People who used to go to church, and now they are convincing folk who go to church, don't go because they don't take all that. Amen. Amen. I ain't just talking to Pharaoh. I'm talking to you. Who used to go. Now you don't want to be accountable to nobody. You want to do your own thing. Come when you want to go. Do what you want to do. Don't give power. Don't give offering. Don't bring your gift and your talent to the church so God can use it for his growth. So here he said it's going to be a great moraine. What is moraine? Amtrak. Why am I showing you this? They didn't call it Amtrak back then. I don't think it's ironic that we call it Amtrak. The Hebrew word is Moraine. What's my point? Everything that was in Moses' days is in our day. Amen. Amen. Everything that was in Jeremiah's day is in our day. Come on now. This is why Solomon said, there is nothing new under the sun. The same thing that we have to face, same forces of opposition that came against them, now is in modern day time. It's those same forces, because the devil ain't nothing new with him. Amen. Same old tricks. Amen. Amen. Same old trades. Amen. Same old manip manipulation. Amen. Same old tactics. Same old wiles. Same old strategies. Ain't nothing changed. He's done the same thing in a new day with a different people. Amen. Amen. But they were still required to show up in the temple. Amen. This is why the prophet said, uh, Isaiah, I sought me a man to stand in the cap to make up the heads between Amen. the church and the world. Amen. But I found them. But you got one today. Amen. Amen. You got a man that's going to stand here today Amen. and preach this gospel in its purest form and form the people. Let them know. Don't panic. Amen. 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 God's got it. Amen. In the meantime, get back to church. Amen. Amen. In the meantime, get back to midweek service. Amen. In the meantime, Amen. get back to prayer service. Amen. In the meantime, get back to praise team practice. Yeah. In the meantime, get back to dance practice. Yeah. In the meantime, get back to youth service. In yeah. the meantime, yeah. don't shift. Either you're hot or you're cold. Yeah. If you're lukewarm, God will excommunicate you. Come on get now. back to the normal, practical, serving God. In the temple. Amen. So first of all, we've established the fact that they went to church seven days and all we're asking you to do is come too. Amen. Amen. Secondly, we're establishing the fact that what went on with them is going on with us. Now, Amtrak, Amtrak is not the only, there were 10 plagues. Amen. Amen. Listen to this. The devil won't do them. God will. That's right. Amen. That's good. God will. He was allowing all of these things to happen. Just like we've been taught that the destroyer and the death angel is Satan. No. He's the master of it. Okay, you have primary, amen. You have secondary, amen. And you have advanced, amen. That means the person in primary, he's in the same carpentry class. Mm -hmm. The person in secondary, he's in the same carpentry class. Mm -hmm. Then you have the person that's in advanced. They're all in the same trade, but not any of them are the master. That's the instructor of the class, amen. Amen. Satan is the deaf angel who uses what God meant for good, turned into evil, and he became the mastermind behind it. But you've got to look at angels in heaven like a movie. Just heard Holy Spirit say, put them in that phone. Like a movie. Every movie you watch, somebody plays the good role, and somebody plays the villain. Amen. If you want to see certain people 
movie stars in public, uh, like for instance, when people see certain movie stars in public, they call them by their movie name because they still portray them to be that person that's on them. That's right. But that was just the role they play. Amen. It's the same thing. We have angels in heaven. I got to get up off this because I'm not teaching on the ministry of angels right now. And I have to go deep. This is a very powerful depth subject, but I'm not teaching on that right now. I'm saying this to enlighten you. You have angels in heaven who are God-driven. Amen. And they have the ability to kill and it doesn't affect them emotionally. Mm -hmm. And it's righteous in the eyes of God. But we give all of that power and credit to Satan. That means he's omnipotent, all-powerful in Amen. And it means God's not in control. Now I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get myself to pull back about that. So I'm saying to you, Satan is not the only one can kill. Don't you got a gun in your car? All right. Well. Amen. Amen. Well. Amen. Okay. Did you hear that? Amen. Don't you got a gun in your house? Amen. You just not a master murderer. Amen. So the angels in heaven are like people in the church. They have been trained, developed, and equipped for different assignments. Amen. Amen. And they don't operate like humans because in human heart, we faint. Mm -hmm. If our children burn the house down, we become faint hearted. We go in there with the belt and we walk out with an ice cream cone. Amen. Some of y'all get that in just a second. Amen. <clears throat> so here we have. God talking to Moses. He said, go to Pharaoh. Don't go to no cloud. <coughs> We've been taught things in error for years. Amen. <laughs> so when truth comes, we wrestle. Mm -hmm. So now we see that these diseases and sicknesses have been invented. First of all, the genocide of a nation or nationality of people. Amen. Amen. And when everybody gets caught up in the flux of it, the money becomes so overwhelming that they, they say, well, forget about killing all them black folk. You know, let the white folk and the Hispanic die with them. This is good, good for economics here. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all get that. Let me Amen. see if I can talk to y'all over here. Right. Yeah, it might be aimed at the black culture of people. All right. And then when the wealth starts to flow in, then you got the Native Americans, you, you, you have the Hispanic, you have the black folk, the Caucasians. Everybody's caught up in the front of it. And when they look over there and see that picture, they say, forget this. Okay, let's invent something else. Call it medication. All right. Amen. <laughs> and every time they come to get a normal checkup, let's just put them on 0 0.4 gram, 0.4 gram. And keep them on that for the rest of their life. Because this is good for economics. Amen. And for God behind it. Amen. So now the granddaddy of them all done hit. And this is not the first time, because back during that time, in Amphrax, tell you the truth, what happened there, when you get over to Exodus chapter 11, which we're not going to make it today, when you get over to Exodus chapter 11, what happens to you, God said, here's the last curse. Amen. Here's the last place. He said, now, Pharaoh ain't going to listen to you, Moses. Isn't that amazing? Moses had to go to that temple, not only, but at least 12 different times. Because every time a plague hit, God said, don't tell them let my people go. Amen. And Pharaoh, he wouldn't let the people go. Yeah. Amen. So on the, on the tenth plague, he said, now this is what's got to happen here. He said, now, people in church, they have very minimum faith because all they're doing is praying for their own personal needs. Amen. 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 See, see, see we're, we're in elementary. Amen. So, what happens is, here, he said, I got one more plan. He said, I have one more plan. Can I get him to give me some juice without kind of picking up? I have one more plan. And he said, this plan right here is going to be the plan. Listen to this. This is going to be the plan that's going to bring, listen to me clearly. I'm not preaching on false doctrine. This is going to be the plague that's going to set you free in that day. Which possibly I'm not saying it is, and I'm definitely not going to say it's not. May bring the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because after this plague 
faith and I'm about to preach to you. And I got to give you some more scripture. Why people are led out of church with good excuse. He said, now, Moses, here's the last plague. He said, I'm going to kill everything from Pharaoh's house. That means the White House. I'm not preaching no death message. I'm preaching the Bible. He said, if I don't make trouble hit the White House, then it ain't gonna, it's not going to have any effect because it's only in your house. If it only hit the house of the peasant and not hit the house of the king, it's not going to have a great effect. So what's going to happen is I'm going to send this last plague. And what this last plague is going to consist of is I'm going to kill all of the firstborn from the firstborn of cattle mm -hmm. to the firstborn of sheep Amen. to the firstborn of horses Amen. to the firstborn of, 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 of thy, thy sons mm -hmm. to the firstborn of thy daughters. He said everything that was firstborn from the fish in the sea to the fowl in the air and everything that creepeth upon the face of the earth whatever was first is going to die he said when this death hit isn't it very ironic how many thousands of people have died in China thousands of people that are dying in America thousands of people that are dying in Europe thousands of people that are dying in Italy I believe if not and I'm not going to say it's not to, if Jesus don't come I believe it's now and real real close at the door when that death hit the White House over in the days of Pharaoh the Bible says Pharaoh came around he said go get Moses and tell him I said come stand before me and the Bible says he thrust them out which is a type of Christ coming Watch this. Same thing in the days of Noah when he was building the ark. That's right. Amen. Preaching like me and nobody would listen. Same thing in the days of Lot when Lot came out and the angel called him and told him, look, get out and don't look back. Why? Because any man putting his hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom of heaven, not the kingdom of the earth. So this ain't a time to draw back. This is a time to press your way to church, press your way to prayer, press your way to work, press your way home. Wash your hands, wash your hair, wash your face, do the routine, do the second nature thing, and keep that regiment as a regular lifestyle. Why? Because you don't know when the time nor the hour when the Son of Man shall appear to call his people up out of this place. It could be possibly at the door. Let me document some of this so I got to bring it in. Look over in verse number nine. <laughs> Look at verse number nine. Actually, I'm going to read verse eight and nine. I'm not going to get over to the other portion. Verse eight says, the Lord said, I'm in, I'm in Exodus nine. Amen. I mean, Exodus 9, verse 8 says, The Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, Take to your handfuls of ashes. This ain't no root of the furnace, and let Moses sprinkle it toward heaven in the sight of Pharaoh. Now, let me let me clarify this before I go any further here. He ain't sprinkling, listen to me. He's not sprinkling the ashes in heaven, toward heaven, he thought of an owl. He's not doing his principality in the second heaven. He's doing it, listen to me, because Pharaoh and the, the, the Egyptians are strongly into witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Spellcasting. This is one of the reasons why God has apostles and prophets to operate in what is called signs and wonders. It's not because God can't perform it, but it's because People are drawn to that. Remember when Moses comes on the scene. I've got to fast forward this. I can't do all of this in one topic. And, and he cast his, he cast, I'm going to just do one. He cast his scepter, which was his staff, his rod. He threw it down on the ground. What did Pharaoh tell his magicians to do? Mm. They threw their scepters down. Yes. What did their scepters become? Snakes. Hey. What did Moses' scepter do? It ate up their snakes. Yep. Yep. Then Moses went and picked up his snake, but they never picked up their snake. It was the type of Christ ruling and reigning over the prince of the air, not the sky, 
who is Satan, prince over air. The word air is Zoe, which we take the word life. life. Meaning the prince that has mastermind how to get into the bodies of people who inhale or who exhale breath. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. When it says he's the prince of the air, it means he's the prince of man. Because you got air in your body, and if you don't believe it, stop breathing. <laughs> it's where we take the word Zoe. So what God is doing here, he's coming against witchcraft. Told Moses, this is going to get their attention. That's why we need power going on in the church. You know, Pastor, we're not here. I just got to say, we operate in this. The people never see it because, the, you know, there's certain vibe. It has to be a certain atmosphere. A topic like this. This is supposed to produce the certain necessary kind of faith to create the environment for God to come sit and step down into. So blind eyes are open. Remember the apostle Peter, chief, comes into the temple with a man begging. Everybody else giving them money. Peter says, Sir, I don't have my number. What I got? You need it. In the name of Jesus Christ, take up your bed and walk. The Bible said a man leaped up on his feet, ran into the temple, dancing and jumping and praising God. Yeah. Because the people were strongly heavily into witchcraft. We preached this years ago. Isn't it amazing how we've come full circle now, having to go back and preach demonology and witchcraft again, again. Amen. So they said, take the four of them in half. Why? It's going to get their attention. It's going to get their attention. Just like if you were to come up in here with a bag in your hand, y'all know what it is, you're to pay for it. Amen. I was standing in this pulpit with a bag, God don't want me to use what's in the bag. He want me to take that bag out that's got the graveyard dust and the woman's cycle, blood, and the salt and the garlic. You know, you've been a witch. All of y'all been in that mess. People still in it right now. I've been to church. Some of the biggest witches and warlocks sitting in pews right now. How do I know? Because I get full. Ask me to come down to break the power of those spells that's been cast on them. Break them off. Have them to call the minister line. Amen. And I talk to them. And I learn things from them. Say, so get that. Why did Paul have handkerchiefs and aprons? Because they had they had things around their neck in those days. And they, they were little emeralds. There were spells on them. And when you show that, you wanted to get the people's attention. Why? Because they're to that. Amen. They were accustomed to throwing dust, sitting in sackcloth, and throwing ashes all over the hell. So God was telling Moses, here's how you're going to get their attention. Like right now, I got the attention of the nation right now. Platform just still not big enough. Amen. And somebody somewhere got to put me out there. Amen. So this just should not be reduced down, nor shrunk down, all for the sake of smallness. This word has to get out there and circle it on the circuit. Amen. Amen. So now he has their attention. That's working. Why? They're used to that. They're used to casting spells. They're used to cutting folk hair out with their sleep. They're used to that mess. So now God wants him to perform the miracle in his name. Go down to verse number nine because I've got to come in. So he sprinkled the dust to get their attention. Pharaoh is used, he used to that. He's not moved by that. Amen. Because everything that Moses was doing by instructions of God, the magicians was doing it. Amen. But there came that one thing that Moses done by the instruction of God, and the magicians tried to do it, and it wouldn't work. So Pharaoh said, why won't it work? They said, we can't do that right now. He said, why not? He said, it's the thing of God. Amen. He says the hand of God. Look at verse 9. And it shall become small dust in all the land of Egypt. That's the world. Amen. And shall be a ball. Look at this. A ball breaking forth. Sound like Job to you? Amen. With blands upon man. Since you don't know Job, do it sound like Corona. <laughs> do you got any sense today? Upon man. And upon beasts. Well, it, it, it started out from animal to animal. Now it's people to people. Throughout all the land, watch this here now, of Egypt. Now I can't finish this today. 
So I'm going to have to bring this, bring it in. And as we go, I have to show you by the word of God how they, I've been showing you how they're invented. And I'm going to show you how there are no medications on the shelf that heal. But I guarantee you I can call some popular people's name out who got certain things and they're still alive because they got the money to pay for it. Whether God heal you by medication or whether you get healed by divine, it's still God. Amen. <laughs> now, this verse 9. What is this verse 9? Amtrak. Amtrak. Remember that was taking this little disease, putting it on mail, postage, sending it to people's addresses. They go out to the mailbox and touch it. And it, 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 some of them would die. Some of them would get sick. Same thing going on now. Amen. So many different diseases. There were ten plagues. The plague we're dealing with right now is Corona plague. Amen. Now I've got to make it clear on this right here. Because here in the Exodus, these 32 books of Exodus that Moses wrote, God was doing it. But today, man doing it. Say that again. Amen. Back on that day, God was allowing it to happen by his hand. This day, he's allowing it to happen, but he's not allowing it to happen because this is what he purposed. He's allowing it to happen because it's greed. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And God ain't greedy. Amen. Why he got to be greedy when he owns everything? Amen. The earth is the Lord. Amen. The food is the Lord. all that dwell therein. Amen. God don't own the cattle on a thousand hills because he count them. He own the cattle on a thousand hills because the hills go with the earth that he own. Amen. God own hell. The devil don't own hell. Amen. Quit making the devil the chief of hell. Jesus went down to the quarters of the hell, the bare quarters of the earth for three days and preached the gospel of John the Baptist, which is the gospel of repentance, Amen. and brought back many of the old covenant saints who had not been made available the grace message of salvation so it's not a second time he had to make it available to them so that they could choose to serve Jesus or choose to serve them. Amen. And the Bible said many of the old covenant saints were seen many days, 40 days here alive. Imagine somebody been in a grave, not that grave, the grave of the, of the resting place called Abraham, Abraham's bosom. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you're looking at Abraham, mm -hmm. Isaac and Jacob, Enoch and Elijah. Walking around, Sarah, one of my favorites, Ruth, another one of my favorites. I love, I love, I love Ruth. Amen. Walking around with Jesus. When Jesus went, they left with him. Amen. Amen. All too justified to be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. Lord. He just allowed them to come back like he allowed Moses and Elijah to come back in the Mount of Transfiguration. And there were people who saw Peter, James, and John. So now we have the old covenant saints walking around. What's my point? This is Amtrak. Amen. Amen. It's nothing new. It's nothing new. Let's bring this in. So, where are we? There's an attack against the kingdom of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, do you know what that is? That's us. Amen. You cannot physically attack Jesus, but you can attack his people who represent his kingdom because when they asked Jesus what was his kingdom, he said the kingdom is in you. Mm -hmm. That's right. So when they're coming against us, they're coming against Jesus. He comes to Paul, I'm bringing it in, he says, Paul, back then, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, who are you, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus, who you persecute. Well, how was he persecuting Jesus? Because he was coming against his church. Amen. He was coming against his people, shutting church doors down. And I'm challenging people to open them back up. I'm telling you, do the thing. Wash your hand. Take a bath. Put alcohol on your hand, on your body. Clean yourself. Use bleach. Use those things. Use those items. But in the meantime, use your faith and your prayer. Because when the righteous cry, the Lord hear the cry of the righteous, and he deliver you from all 
shield of, of your affliction, many of the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord Jesus Christ deliver us out of them all. Amen. 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 Let's conclude.